Your Excellencies, Ladies and Gentlemen, dear participants, dear friends, a very cordial welcome to the Davos Agenda Week 2021. I'm particularly pleased and honored to welcome you, Your Excellency Guy Parmela, President of the Swiss Confederation, our traditional host country. We are here together in 2021, which I consider a pivotal year, a crucial year for our future. We have the chance to move out with vaccines of the hot face of the COVID crisis and to rebuild our economies, but we have to do so in a way that our economy and our society will be more resilient, more inclusive and more sustainable. The first step we have to undertake is to restore trust. But in order to restore trust, we have to reinforce first global cooperation. And second, we have to make sure that everybody is contributing in shaping a more positive future. Governments, business, civil society, but also the young generation. We will address five policy areas during the Davos Agenda Week. First, we will drive responsible industry transformation. And this can only happen if business accepts stakeholder capitalism, which means that business is not only serving short-term objectives of shareholders, but at the same time is taking into consideration that business has to act as a social organism and serve people, the planet and society at large. Second, we have to enhance global stewardship. And this year with COP26 later taking place in Glasgow, we have to make progress in becoming carbon zero. And again, business here has to take on a very strong commitment. Number three, we have to design fair economic and social systems. Key here is to take care of those who suffered in their livelihood as a consequence to COVID. And we have to create sufficient jobs, decent jobs for everybody if we want to create a more inclusive society. Fourth, we have seen in the pandemic the importance of new technologies, but we have to shape those technologies for good, for good of people and for good of society. And fifth, we have to create a new multilateral system. A multilateral system which is fair, a multilateral system which takes into account the necessities of the 21st century. So, many sessions over the next week will drive progress and we will come together again in Singapore. It will be the first in-person meeting, in-person summit to show concrete solutions related to the different challenges which will be laid out in the course of next week. And then we will come back uh, to Davos in Switzerland. 2021 will be a crucial year to build trust. But trust doesn't come only from dialogue, from exchanging opinions. Trust comes from speaking with the heart. And for this reason, I am so delighted that this session is devoted to the heart and not just only to our brains. We will hear afterwards a wonderful concert, which really 
brings together the whole world. This concert is preceded by a ceremony, as we do in Davos since many years, to honor artists who have not only excelled in terms of their artistic creativity, but also in serving society. But before we have the honor to listen to the president of the Swiss Confederation, Guy Parmela, Your Excellency, the floor is yours, and we are happy that by calling this the Davos Agenda Week, we show, even if we meet only virtually, that we are committed to our place of origin, to our host country. The floor is yours, Mr. President. Monsieur le Président, Mr. Chairman, Madame Schwab, Mrs. Schwab, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, a crisis is a productive event as long as you are capable of pushing the cloud of doom and gloom to the back of your mind. This quote from Swiss writer Max Frisch sums up our goal for 2021 in a nutshell. We're still in the throes of a raging pandemic. People are grieving for the loved ones they have lost. Others are piecing together broken dreams. But we need to look further ahead in time. We need to prepare the ground for when we exit the acute phase of the pandemic and reflect upon the major challenges that humankind will face unrelated to COVID-19. The Davos Agenda will tackle some vital points shaping a sustainable global economy, strengthening international cooperation, capitalizing on the opportunities offered by digital technology, the speed and efficiency of vaccine developments shows just what governments, businesses and the scientific community are capable of achieving when they join forces. For many years now, the World Economic Forum has offered a platform for dialogue to politicians, business leaders and civil society. This dialogue, even if it cannot or only rarely be face-to-face, -face, is critical to our future. As the President of the Swiss Confederation, I am extremely disappointed that we were unable to host the 51st Annual Summit at Davos. I truly hope that the event due to take place in Singapore will send out strong signals. And I am delighted that the summit will return home in 2022, as this will also be a clear sign that the worst of the crisis is behind us. Your Excellencies, if we want the third decade of the new millennium to be the new booming 20s, we will need to make some serious efforts to avert a new crisis. Political, economic and social decision makers will need to clearly embrace a model based on sustainable growth. I would like to thank all those who are already working towards that future goal. Today, it is the World Economic Forum and those responsible for drawing up the agenda that I would particularly like to thank. Thank you very much for your attention. Cultural actors are scouts for society. The evolutionary purpose of that is to make sure that whatever you discover gets back to the mainstream. We're in a stage where technology has been turned against the people. The only icons we have on our phone are either thumbs up, thumbs down, and a heart. There is no umbrella for understanding, and most of the comments are hatred. We have to find a way for culture, for leaders, to make a connection for people that felt left by a system. Artists' interpretation of political reality are extremely important, and what they have to say will be vastly different. It's a pure form of reflection. Trovare il giusto equilibrio tra l'esigenza di giustizia e l'esigenza di libertà. If you connect with someone, then they are likely to have a, a human reaction. And empathy is one of the core things on which humanity is built. You tell the things that somebody else may not be able to say, telling the truth the way it is. As we lose trust in politics and politicians and justice, telling stories of the truth is very powerful. 
even if somebody disagrees with a performance of mine, like if you're talking women, you're talking education, you're talking family welfare, you're talking health, you're talking the environment, you're talking water resources, this intersectionality is so huge that you take one and in fact you are touching a lot of the others. When you hear a musician from a different part of the world, you're not necessarily thinking about us versus them. Then the divisions melt away because you're caught in the moment. A great song, great piece of music, doesn't matter what language it's in, people feel it even more than they hear it. Mio parere la libertà di ciascuno di noi finisce laddove inizia quella degli altri. We need to have other ways that lead us to create a common narrative. People just want to come together. They don't want to be told to come together. They want to engage in conversations. They don't want to be preached to. It opens a dialogue, and that conversation could be so influential. Welcome to the 27th Crystal Award Ceremony of the World Economic Forum. This is a celebration of hope, unity and courage as we honour extraordinary artists who have dedicated their lives to improving the state of the world by driving positive change. My name is Platon. I'm a photographer and I'm humbled to be your co-host this year. And what a year it's already proving to be. Here we are together in a technological trance. Here we are together distracted by mass myths and here we are together divided by tribalism. We're separated by walls, windows, computer screens and above all borders, but we are united in our hearts. So why are we all tuning in today? Well, we at the World Economic Forum believe that all of us are looking for a key a key to unlock this political, economic, social, cultural paralysis. Maybe the answer is in a little word. Empathy. Empathy is not just walking in someone's shoes or feeling someone's pain. Empathy is the secret ingredient to becoming a great leader. So we want you to open up your hearts and open up your minds. In times of confusion, we must not lose our capacity to dare to be kind to one another. So now I have the great privilege to invite someone special to join us. She's one of my favorite people in the world. She's a mentor of mine and a very dear friend. Her name is Hilda Schwab. Hilda is the co-founder of the World Arts Forum of the World Economic Forum. She's also a true champion of the arts, of creativity, and of social entrepreneurship. And she's also the co-founder of this very ceremony, the Crystal Awards. So without further ado, please give a huge warm welcome to my favorite person, Hilda Schwab. Thank you, my dear Platon. It's wonderful to see you. And I'd like to extend also a warm welcome to everyone joining in from across the world. Klaus and I started the Crystal Awards in 1995 because, as you very well know, Platon, we believe that artists and cultural leaders change the world. They help us see in new ways and promote shared visions of what might be possible. It has become a tradition to start the annual meeting of the World Economic Forum in Davos with this award ceremony as a way to anchor the debates in the core values of generosity, courage and vision. This year is no different. It is therefore my pleasure to announce the winners of the 27th Annual Crystal Awards. Our first awardee is the Ghanaian British architect, Sir David Ajay, whose ingenious use of materials and bespoke designs have set him apart as one of the leading talents of his generation. A formative moment in his childhood was when he began to think about designing a facility that would provide better care for people with disabilities, like his brother Emmanuel, who was partially paralyzed. Since that time, he has used architecture as a social act, designing buildings that mirror their histories, whilst creating something entirely new in order to serve their communities. David Ajay and his firm Ajay Associates work all over the world. His largest project to date 
the National Museum of African American History and Culture opened on the National Mall in Washington, D.C. in 2016. It is my great pleasure for David Ajay to receive the 2021 Crystal Award. So we want to congratulate uh, Sir David. And I had the, the great privilege to actually have an honest conversation with him, which we recorded. And it's a very inspiring conversation we had. I'd love to share, Hilda, some of those uh, highlights with you, if I may. Uh, please uh, roll the clip. Your building is, is doing extraordinary things to people in America. Tell me about what this award means in this larger context. So I was deeply humbled by it. I always say in my studio with my team that we use architecture as an instrument. We don't end with architecture. We use architecture to go somewhere else, to go more to the core, the issues. And each one of us chooses what we want to use as our instrument to make the transformations that I think our collective humanity is capable of doing and achieving. What does empowerment mean? You know, for me, it's about trying as much as possible to make as much of a fair world in all aspects of life. It's a sort of romantic, but very aggressive desire and fire I have in me to, to create that. So I'm very much interested in removing structures that inhibit and try to control. How do you know the difference between right and wrong? I believe in doing what you would want seen done to yourself. How do you want to be treated in the world? How do you want your children to be treated in the world? How do you want the world to be treated? And I think those answers, when they're, they're answered honestly, become the moral compass. You can call it right or you can call it wrong. But I think that that is the moral compass and that is the judgment of the person's character. How do you describe success and how do you describe failure? Success is the greatest impact to elevate the most lives. Failure is not doing so. And the issue is to be true to the, to the place in the world that you're in and to do the most in the place in the world that you're in. If we're all doing that, amplifies and lifts us all up. For me, if I could tell a child that, and that child could be myself even, <laughs> be absolutely the best in everything that you're in and watch the consequences of that. At this moment in history, if you could send a message to the most powerful people in the world, um, what would you say to them? We've got to a place where we have done so much and we now are at a place where we need to do even more to be even better than what we are. And now is the time to make a selfless world and to make a world about humanity that reaches further and deeper into a future that we can only just imagine. That's such a beautiful thing to say. It's tuning into your own humanity and that will guide you if you really are in tune with it. Thank you. Great to be continued, my friend. To be continued. Bye-bye. <laughs> well, what an amazing human being. Hilda, I know that you mentioned to me that you've been to the museum yourself in Washington, D.C. Uh, what, was um, what was your impression when you walked into the building? I think I, from an architectural point of view, I thought the building was absolutely outstanding. But when you enter the building also, you get the sense of the history. And I appreciated that very much. Our second awardee is Sebastião Salgado whose iconic black and white photographs have caught the world's attention for decades. He has traveled the globe, documenting life on Earth, provoking debate about the human condition and issues of inequality and sustainability. His photographs impart the dignity and integrity of his subjects without forcing their heroism or soliciting pity. 
Born in Brazil, he trained as an economist before becoming a photographer in the early 1970s. Today, he is recognized as one of the great photojournalists. He has produced a number of extended documentary series throughout his career, several of which have been published, including Africa, Genesis, and From My Land to the Planet. Sebastião Salgado is a recipient of the 2021 Crystal Award. I would love to share with you some highlights of a wonderful conversation I had with him about hope. It's just such a, such a great buzz to talk to you, my friend. Sure, thank you very much. What does storytelling mean to you and, and how important do you think it is? To understand the real, the others, the society that you come to, to it, you need time. You see, a photography is a very special thing to do. When you come inside a group, there is an act that happens, an act sometimes of work, an act sometimes of debate, an act sometimes of uh, any kind of action. But when you come to photograph, you walk in evolution of a parabola, and you made photographs till the point that this story is very well represented in this just a fraction of a second that your picture materializes this story. A photographer don't present a sequence of pictures, present one picture of one story. You've seen humanity pushed to its extremes. If you could pass a message on to powerful people, what would that message be? I say that the most important thing for the human community around the world is the solidarity. The values of our society, they are not intellectual values. They are not material values. They are essential values. That is community, solidarity, love. It's the essential values that our mother teach to us. And uh, your mother never teach to you the egoism. Never. This is not a value. We can live all humans inside a protected planet. We can live in peace with our environment. We are all homo sapiens. What does the word leadership mean to you? Leadership means for me identification with the human group that you are part of it. We cannot uh, do social acts if you are not integrated to the society that you are part of it. The biggest quality that human being must have is humility. What does hope mean? Hope is beautiful. Hope is the battery to live it better. And uh, it's very important to have a hope. Same in a moment as the one that we are living with this COVID, it's necessary to have a hope that what you are living, we become a fabulous lesson that we can live better in our society. Hope is the materialization of the sublime, it's the sublimation of everything. I can't think of a better way to wrap up such a brief chat with you. Um, thank you for everything you've done. Congratulations on winning the Crystal Award. We're all very proud of you. And we also hope that you receiving this award really inspires people to continue to think differently at this pivotal moment in history. Thank you, Sebastian. Thank you very much. Thank you, Platon, for showing us this conversation. It was a, a wonderful um, moment that we spent with uh, Sebastião Salgado. Uh, he's a very engaged photographer. Some of his photographs are sometimes a little bit hard to look at, but uh, they really show us um, the problems in, in the world. So I really admire him. And I think we can say to all leaders around the world that we need you now. Now is the time for us all 
to think about our collective legacy while we can still shape it. And I think as we wrap up this part of the festivities today, perhaps I'd like to leave you not with an answer, but with a question. Are we to be bystanders, like moths dancing around somebody else's flame? Or are we to be upstanders? And we light the darkness ourselves with our own torch of compassion. Perhaps then we can earn the respect of history and transform this chaos into a beautiful artistic cosmos. Thank you, Platon, for these poetic and uplifting last words. Ladies and gentlemen, this marks the end of the 27th Crystal Award ceremony. Thank you for sharing this moment with us. Many congratulations to our awardees. And thank you, dear Platon, what a joy to see you and to do this together. Ladies and gentlemen, I am delighted to introduce the world premiere of See Me, a global concert. Over the next 25 minutes, you will be transported into a cinematic musical experience like no other. See Me was produced by the World Economic Forum in the face of the coronavirus pandemic. Under the direction of Maestra Marin Alsop, it includes performances by Yo-Yo Ma and orchestras and choirs shot on location in Kabul, Vienna, Sao Paulo, Beijing, Florence, Philadelphia, and Drakensberg in South Africa. This project is intended as a shared expression of trust, connection, and hope in these uncertain times. But let me first ask Carlo Messina, the Chief Executive Officer of Intesa San Paolo, to say a few words. Mr. Messina and Intesa, whose generous support made this project possible, are great champions of the arts and very engaged stakeholders in the fight against the pandemic. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I would like to thank Hilde and Klaus for allowing once again Inter San Paolo to sponsor this amazing and cultural initiative. It is a great opportunity to bring everyone together, even in the difficult and critical moment we are living, sending out the messages of togetherness and hope. And I strongly believe that the current pandemic has pressured all of us with a clear sense of urgency and the need to act now sensibly and pragmatically. The COVID-19 pandemic has clearly proved that we are all facing global issues that would require systemic solutions to be more effective. In such a complex and connected world, no single institution and no single company can solve all the problems. At the same time, any institution and any company should prioritize its contribution. As in Tesla San Paolo, we reinforced our efforts to tackle the pandemic by donating over 100 billion euros to strengthen the national health system and supporting the people in need, delivering more than 13 million meals, dormitory beds, medicine prescripts, articles of clothing. We have a duty to leave a positive mark on the society around us and to support the transition towards social, cultural and environmental growth. Now I leave you to enjoy this wonderful concert. Thank you again and I'm sure that we will soon meet in person once more. Thank you very much. A great big thank you, Mr. Messina, for your steadfast support of the arts and our long-lasting collaboration. We are now ready for See Me. Enormous thanks to Marin Alsop, the music director of this project. I know Marin will say a few words. I hope you enjoy and thank you for watching. This is a project born of trust, connection and friendship. As concert halls around the world had to close their doors, we asked ourselves, what can we do to join together to somehow impact this landscape? In response came hundreds of contributions from artists and musicians around the world who wanted to join together to create something special and unique, something to unite us during this time of separation and isolation. Music is a connecting, empowering force and we hope that this journey from one voice playing solo Bach 
to many voices singing a new piece by Rina Esmael, to hundreds of voices celebrating our beautiful planet in Beethoven's Pastoral Symphony. We hope this journey brings you comfort, joy, and most importantly, brings you hope.